pathogenic shift that's making them dangerous for us right now let's talk about the epidemiology of borrelia infection so the type of borrelia species and the infection related with them and obviously we'll be talking the reservoir for the disease because they require an agent so i forgot to mention they require an agent for their uh, agent or ho uh, agent for their growth so the agent in this case uh, is acting as a agent means a reservoir where this they, they are stored for longer run okay and they are also having a vector which is carrying this infection from one agent to another agent, right? So like that. First thing is the Borrelia recurrentis. Now Borrelia recurrentis is the uh, responsible for causing relapsing fever epidemic, which is simply louse born. That means in this case, the vector is body louse. As you can see in this picture, all of them are actually having arthropod vectors. As you can see here, all of them are kind of having arthropod vectors like louse, tick, and hard shell tick, soft, soft, soft shell tick and all these things, whatever, okay. And in this case, the reservoir e are humans, right? Now, uh, so that's why this is a kind of epidemic in nature because it, it, the reservoir are humans. The second thing is Borrelia species. Um, species means many different species of Borrelia can fall in, in, in this particular group. And they also cause relapsing fever endemic, but not epidemic. It's a difference between endemic and epidemic. In this case, it is also called tick bond relapsing fever. But both this case, it is relapsing fever. It will have some common symptoms and uh, other uh, clinical manifestations, but they are slightly different because they are varying uh, by the transmission of the disease uh, with vectors, right? Now, in this case of relapsing fever caused by tick bond infections, where uh, usually soft shelled tick, soft shelled ticks are acting as a vector, and in this case, the reservoir are rodents and soft soft shells ticks okay now the third type of uh, infection it is completely different kind it is called the Lyme disease and this is caused by Borrelia burgdorferi now this Borrelia burgdorferi is having rodents deer domestic pet and hard shelled ticks as reservoir and in this case uh, the vector is hard shelled tick right so all of the vectors are arthropods that's the important point okay so let's first talk about uh, the Borrelia recurrentis and other Borrelia species which are causing the relapsing fever epidemic, right? Now this is the epidemic of the relapsing fever. Now this relapsing fever is a kind of associated with poverty, crowding and warfare. So it's probable that this relapsing fever will more occur in third world countries, third world countries. Okay, because it is related with poverty, crowding and warfare, right? Warfare is a kind of different thing. but uh, these two things are related to third world countries anyways and mo all of them and especially uh, the vectors are arthropod right uh, so especially the vector in this case is louse born right it is also called borreliosis or it is called louse born borreliosis right in this case this is transmitted from person to person by human body lice so lice is acting as a vector so plural of it is uh, pr uh, singular of it is louse and plural is rice anyways and so humans are the reservoirs right so as the humans are reservoirs in fact it infects host only when the louse is injured otherwise not right so during the scratching for example so louse is infecting you if you are scratching if you are being blood coming out in those cases if if this bacteria can enter your bloodstream in those case only it will set in the disease right so therefore a single louse can only infect a single person otherwise it won't right so that's a very important point it can only cause disease when the louse is injured that means suppose you if say this is your body and here comes a louse sitting onto it you just put the hands and scratch them lice louse is dead and the components are getting released because this bacteria plays there somewhere in the body of louse and it won't be coming out until and unless the louse is injured louse is kind of dead so it can only infect one single person at its lifetime right one lice uh, one louse or one single people okay and lice leave leave host that develops a fever and seek normal temperature right so so very very uh, kind of condition is uh, it develops into a fever so that's why it's called the relapsing fever right but this fever is not a common fever it is having a kind of ups and downs during the process during the time incubation period of the disease and we'll be seeing different kind of symptoms and uh, different kinds of conditions with patients we'll be seeing it later 
Now, this is the louse bone. The second kind of infection can be tick borne borreliosis. It is also called the endemic relapsing fever. And this is a sporadic in cases, right? And it is transmitted via soft body ticks uh, as their vectors and from small mammal reservoirs, right? So, small mammal reservoir means a pet, mouse, and all these things. And the ticks can multiply and infect new human hosts. But in this case, the reservoir can be small mammals. So the degree of infection can be increased if uh, if the proper care is not taken uh, when uh, human when when a human or individual is in contact with other pet or something like that. Okay. Now, if you look at the pathogenesis of relapsing fever, it is that this relapsing fever is also called as tick fever, borreliosis, or famine fever. So all of these things, tick fever, borreliosis, famine fever, all of them are another name of relapsing fever, right? Now, the acute infection starts with almost uh, less than a week. So, you can see 2 to 14 days, uh, especially around 6-day incubation period and followed by the recurring uh, febrile episodes, right? Now, constant spirochetemia that, uh, so whatever, we don't need to talk about it anyway. So, this is the important point that usually they start to uh, occur, the, the symptoms start to come at the very beginning of the infection, which is almost uh, equal to 6 days. Now, the epidemic relapsing fever is a louse borne borreliosis caused by Borrelia recurrentis. We have talked about it. Endemic is caused by other Borrelia species. We have also talked about it. So, let's, let's come to the clinical progression of the relapsing fever. Now, if you can see, it, it might look uh, very uh, pretty uh, jotty, but it's not that because if we look at it very carefully, what we can find here is that in this case, in each kind, in, in each, during, during each time or each cycle, you can see the rise of fever. And then you can see, so if you look at the temperature in Fahrenheit, so you can see the rise in temperature to 104, 103, 104 like that, and then it's falling down again to the normal condition, right? So each condition, it's a kind of fever cycle that is going on. So you can see no, so just, just start of the infection. So infection begins at this place, it will require almost uh, 2 to 14 days it can take, and then the infection start to occur at this particular time. So let me change the color here in this case. Let me change it, okay. So here it is the point when it hits and the fever occurs at 104 and it will stay for for many days. It will stay for almost four or five days. Four or five days. Not not sorry, not four or five. It's uh, almost say three. Two to three days. Two to three days of this high fever. And then it again falls. Now during this uh, start of the fever, what it it, it, it is uh, related with headache, it is related with lethargy, non non productive cup. Uh, and myalgia and all these things, these are the symptoms associated whenever the fever starts. And then again, when the fever is dropping, it is having another type of symptom like sweat, asthenia, asthenia and drenching. Right? So again, uh, for two, two days, for two or so days, it will have a very low fever. Then it will bring again and fever will hit again. So this is first cycle. Now the second cycle, fever hits again and again all the kind of condition like rigor, headache, vomiting. Okay, so all these things will occur. Again, the fever is coming down and falling. And again, when the fever is falling, it is having sweat, asthenia, drenching. So whenever fever is going away, it is causing, causing sweat, asthenia, drenching. And when the fever is coming again, it is a headache, it is of uh, lethargy, non-productive cough, and all these things are going on. And finally, again, the third for the third time, it is gone. So it will be gone. The cycle will go on and on like that through almost... 10 to 12 days and after 10 to 12 days uh, when, when the when it is properly diagnosed uh, with uh, different clinical approaches and if it is treated with tetracycline or other antibiotics we can see the fever is coming down and then it will uh, be a kind of level off like that right so that's how this is a typical progression of relapsing fever right so this kind of fever cycle is related with many different type of diseases like malaria and other type of diseases but in this case this relapsing fever is uh, one of them